The world of George Lucas's Star Wars is a well of inspiration for video games, and in the nearly 40 year history of the franchise, there have been over 100 games released across consoles, handhelds, PCs, and mobile devices. Some are considered classics in their respective genres, and well, some are perhaps best forgotten. Following the series' humble beginnings on the Atari 2600, Lucasfilm finally broke out LucasArts, its own game division, in 1990. It took a few years before it began to ship its own Star Wars games, but many of these are remembered as the most classic games in the entire series. Sadly, LucasArts' time has passed, and in 2013, Disney purchased Star Wars and handed over the reins to Electronic Arts. With a new series of films on the way from famed director J.J. Abrams, there are no doubt plenty of Star Wars games to look forward to, but regardless of what happens in the future, the past belongs to the fans. It all began back in 1982 with the second movie on a console far, far away, the Atari 2600. The first Star Wars game was created not by Lucasfilm's early game division, but by Parker Brothers. 1982's The Empire Strikes Back dropped you into battle on the frigid planet of Hoth. Your one and only goal was to defend the secret rebel base from massive four-legged juggernauts known as AT-ATs. It was a simple recreation of the iconic scene from the film, but more importantly, it was the first interactive Star Wars experience that players could enjoy at home. A year later, Parker Brothers followed up with 1983's Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle. It was another simple shooting game, but this time, you got to man the iconic Millennium Falcon, and shoot down TIE Fighters while chipping away at the Death Star before delivering the final blow to the reactor core, destroying the Death Star and Vader once and for all. That same year, Parker Brothers also released Jedi Arena. It attempted to recreate the excitement of fighting with lightsabers, but with stationary Jedi and abstract combat, the results were unfortunately underwhelming. Ultimately, it was the port of Atari's own Star Wars arcade game that defined the true Star Wars experience on the 2600. The original arcade release featured vector graphics and digitized voices, delivering a revolutionary and influential experience for the time. Not all of these elements made it to the home release, but Atari was able to retain the core gameplay, which was a major step up from previous games set in the Star Wars universe. It was also the first game based on A New Hope, the first film in the original trilogy. Atari took Star Wars back to the arcades in 1984, but it leapt over The Empire Strikes Back and instead went straight into Return of the Jedi. Jedi would forego the model of the first game in favor of an isometric on-rails shooter that recreated numerous scenes from Jedi, including the speeder bike chase on Endor and the Millennium Falcon's assault on the Death Star. Finally, in 1985, Atari went back and closed out the trilogy releasing the Empire Strikes Back update for the first arcade game, which once again took players back to Hoth for another go at defending the rebel base from Imperial forces and massive AT-ATs. By the late 80s, Atari was flagging in the console market, but Nintendo's 8-bit system was on the rise, making it the perfect candidate for a new Star Wars game. In 1987, Namco brought Star Wars to the Famicom, the Japanese version of the NES. Namco's interpretation of the story wasn't entirely accurate, but the game itself was simple and fun, and it introduced Star Wars fans to the world of side-scrolling platformers, which would become the predominant genre for the series over the next few years. Finally, in 1991, North America got its own Star Wars game on the NES, courtesy of JVC and Lucasfilm Games. From Tatooine to the Death Star, Star Wars A New Hope was a more faithful interpretation of the original film, apart from Luke using a lightsaber in combat, something which never happened in the first film. JVC came back a year later with Empire Strikes Back. It mixed platforming, side-scrolling shooting, and for the first time, lightsaber on lightsaber action. But again, JVC dropped the ball. What the hell is Luke doing with a red lightsaber? Anyway, at that point, the Super Nintendo was on the scene, and sure enough, Star Wars made an appearance there too. Three, to be exact. Sculpted Software and LucasArts recreated the original trilogy on the SNES between 1991 and 1994. Their games featured huge, detailed sprites and some of the best sound effects in any Star Wars game to date. They were primarily action platforming games, but thanks to the Super Nintendo's Mode 7, you also got the chance to pilot Luke's land speeder and an X-Wing, including other iconic vehicles in pseudo 3D sequences. But before the Super Trilogy concluded, LucasArts created its first solo Star Wars project for the PC in 1993, the legendary space combat game X-Wing. It was one of the first Star Wars games to achieve critical and commercial success, and after two expansions, LucasArts created a sequel in 1994, TIE Fighter. TIE Fighter used a new rendering engine and offered a unique perspective on the conflict between the Rebels and the Empire, allowing you to fight for the dark side for the first time. LucasArts capped off the miniseries with X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter in 1997, concluding the X-Wing trilogy. 
At the same time that it was developing its series of dedicated space combat games, LucasArts was also busy crafting Rebel Assault and Rebel Assault 2. Thanks to the advent of CD-ROM technology, LucasArts was able to use pre-rendered 3D environment models and full motion video. The filmic experiences were special at the time when games were struggling to break free from floppy disks and into the realm of high-capacity CD storage. Impressively, that's not all LucasArts had up its sleeve. Not one to let a trend pass it by, LucasArts was also working on Dark Forces, a first-person shooter in the vein of Doom. The 1997 sequel, Dark Forces 2, took the model of the first game and ran with it. It was the first multiplayer game for the series, and players were finally allowed to go head-to-head -head with lightsabers. Kill me! Dark Forces 2 also allowed you to switch between first- and third-person views, which was an unusual feature for any game at the time. LucasArts was steeped in PC development in the mid-90s, but in 1996, it returned to consoles shortly after the release of the Nintendo 64 with Shadows of the Empire. This third-person action game took place between the storylines of The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. You played as a smuggler, Dash Rendar, and assisted Luke in the rescue of Princess Leia from the grip of Prince Sizor. Shadows wasn't as good as LucasArts' other Star Wars games of the day, but it was nonetheless a commercial success. In 1997, LucasArts did the unthinkable and released a Star Wars fighting game for the PlayStation titled Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi. Fighting game enthusiasts loathed the game's rough 3D engine, and Star Wars fans balked at the mistreatment of lightsabers, which were incapable of cutting clothes or severing limbs. All too easy. A few months before George Lucas unleashed Star Wars Episode I, LucasArts and Factor 5 worked together to release Star Wars Rogue Squadron on the Nintendo 64 and Windows PCs. It featured arcade-style action across 16 levels that tapped into many of the film's iconic locations, and the console version was one of the first games to use the Nintendo 64's RAM expansion pack for high-resolution graphics. LucasArts also managed to hide a secret code within the game that unlocked the Naboo Starfighter from The Phantom Menace, which was only revealed to the public after the first film hit theaters the following year. The release of The Phantom Menace was a major turning point for the Star Wars franchise, and it had a significant impact on the games that followed in the years to come. Stay tuned to GameSpot for part two of our History of Star Wars video games, where we tackle games inspired by Lucas's prequel trilogy, Legos, and of all things, hot dance moves. Solo, I'm hot solo, I'm hot solo, I'm hot solo, solo.